Okay, talking about stances, dachi stances. When ever you're studying karate, your foundation is the beginning point of your movements, where your power comes from. A weak karate stance, a weak karate technique. That is a fundamental concept that's so important that people get that in up here. So when we're going to start training, we're, going to, we're actually going to start with a karate stance. A lot of people don't realize that, but yoi is a karate stance. So when we come into the dojo, you're going to stand natural. Hands will be here, roughly about the size of a donut apart from one another. This is yoi. Yoi is your ready stance. If I'm training with a partner and we're doing a two-partner drill, I need to make sure that I'm here, eye contact, so they know I'm ready to defend if they were to attack. That is vital in the dojo because a lot of the techniques that we do in here, especially if you're at full power, full speed, and you're not paying attention, you get hurt, and that's how karate is. So you always your first position. Kets kick, attention, very important stance. Toes point out at a 45, back is up straight, and the hands are touching the legs. They're not just, you're not like this. You're here, okay? Even though this isn't a stance that's a command ray, ray means to bow. So you keep the hands on the body, bend at the waist, and come back up. Don't let your hands drop out, right? And then back up, okay? Natural standing posture. In Kiyom Kata, which is the first kata everybody learns, your very first stance is going to be called natural standing posture. When you do this, it's a front stance, but it's a modified one. Okay? You're going to basically start from your yoi position, step forward with your foot, and then bend the knee. Just a natural standing posture, basically, just leaning in forward a little bit. Whenever you're walking in these stances, and you do this in a lot of stances as well, you're going to have this little arcing motion that actually activates our hip. So if I'm stepping forward here, I'll have that, notice how my hip's set, and then I set my hip. That is a little application of physics as far as the hip set goes. So when you're doing the natural stance, you just take a step forward and bend the knee. The knee bend is very important. And then I'm going to step again and bend my knee. And then step again and bend my knee. Okay. Moving from that to Zenkosodach, which is front stance. The front stance is a lot longer, elongated. It's designed to lower your center of gravity so you can hit hard. So when I'm doing Zenkosodach, I'll actually be out double shoulder width apart, like this, as you can notice. And the back leg will point as forward as much as possible. This one definitely forward, and your knee is bent over the top of your instep. When you're stepping from this position, you're going to bring this leg in, sweep out, and set. Now, when it comes to the front stance, it's very important to understand it's got to be wide. You can't be like this, because then you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. I, been surfing and falling off the board because I didn't have my feet in the right position. Once again, foundation is everything. So you want to actually make sure that you're standing on railroad tracks, as we call them. Track A, track B. Boom. Okay. And then when I step, I go back out to that track. Notice my body stays forward the entire time. Because in coastal dots, you're always going to be facing forward. So when I step, I'm here forward. And I step again, and I'm here forward. Very important. Notice there wasn't an up and down movement either. I didn't go up and down. I keep my body in the center of gravity low when I step, so I'm chambered. Nice and easy. Very simple. Cat stance. Cat stance is one of the hardest stances there is for people to get. Uh, it's not a natural stance. Front stances are natural, okay? But cat stance is not. Cat stance looks like a T. Back leg will point out to the side. This one will be up forward, but up on the ball of the foot. So it's very important you don't do this. Don't line them up. They have to be wide. So if I do the cat stance to the front, it'd be a natural position. This foot points out, and I step this foot in. But I'm staying forward when I do this, and I'm up on the ball of that foot to the front. From the side, this is what it would look like. Now you notice my heel and my hip and my shoulder are in perfect alignment. That is very important in your cat stance. You don't want to be here. See how I'm leaning forward? And I don't want to be too far back because then I'll fall. So I want to set forward my stance. And then I just step forward and keep it down. Very, very, very easy way to do this. Training good. And you want to come up on that lead foot as far as you can, but your ball has to be foot. Don't point your toe. Keep your ball down as far as the stance is concerned. Weight distribution is different. Uh, 
they had lots of documentation said that was a 90-10. I've been told an 80-20. Uh, front stance, I've been told a 60-40. I've been told a 7-30. As far as I'm concerned, whatever your comfort level of your weight distribution is, that's fine with me. Okay? Shiko Dodge. Shiko Dodge is sumo stance. And it's very important you understand the difference between this and a Kiba Dodge. Because a lot of people do a Kiba. When you execute a Shiko Dodge, your feet point out at a 45, and your knees set over the top of the ankle. Very simple. Or a heel, if you want to call it that way. Okay? You don't want your knees pointed at the floor. You want them pushed out like you're setting down on somebody. Uh, the easiest way to understand this is you get to a point where your body will naturally stop you. When you're younger, you'll be a lot deeper. You get higher. This is comfortable for me. I can hold this for a while. Back up straight. Don't lean forward. Don't put your butt out. Back up straight. Set your energy. From the side, this is the easiest way to look at a sheep with that. That's how the knees are pressed out, almost like I'm pushing them backwards. Very important. Kiba Dodge is another version of that stance. Uh, it's one that we personally do not use in our kata, but it is heavily adapted in Japanese karate, and I see it over there. However, we do use it for kumite. So Kiba is something that's very, very important. When we were in our shiko, we were here with our heels lined up. When we do kiba, our toes point forward and our knees are more or less angled down at the ground and you're squeezing yourself forward. It's more of a U, as you can see the U, whereas the shiko is more of a box. Kiba, shiko. Very important to understand the difference on these two. The namadashi stance is the nahashi san is the first introduction to that, and then we use it in pasan and a few other kata. Namadashi stance is our version of a back stance. It's more of a cyber leaning position when you do this. Your feet stay forward and you keep them on the same line and you turn your hip so you're here like this. The alignment of the shoulder and ankle lined up perfectly. Now, when we get to looking at Pinot and Godon, you're not going to be on the same line. You're actually going to have this foot this way a little bit further so you can lean more when you use that in that kata as far as that goes. So there's different ways of doing the namadachi. This right here is a great stance for throwing, evading, and striking. Naihanshi Dachi. For whatever reason, whenever I'm teaching Naihanshi Kata, uh, it seems like a lot of people have a real, real hard time getting this stance. Uh, they'll either pinch their knees together, or they'll have their feet out wrong. All you gotta remember is toes in, heels out, set. Say so again, toes in, heels out, and set, set the knees, okay? So if I'm standing here, I'll go toes in, heels out, and then I'll set my knees. This is a comfortable stance, okay? If I push my knees in, it's hurting, and it should hurt because it's putting under pressure. But toes in, heels out, knees bent, okay? You actually are closing your hips. So I'm not doing this with my knees out, I'm closing my hips so I can set in that stance. Now, Hachi stance, for some people, is going to be very shallow. For young people, they're often very wide when they're doing that. The depth of the stance doesn't matter, except you've got to do the same right to left whenever you're stepping in the kata. That's very important. The Nahachi stance is a solid closed stance. It is a method of keeping yourself from getting thrown. Uh, I guess the easiest way to look at that would be keep it nice and simple and center your weight, which is very important for counting and throw. Okay? Uh, Sanchin Dachi. Sanchin Dachi, we covered in Sanchin Kata the other day. It is a back leg pointing straight forward, and then the front foot turned in like Nahachi, and then the hips square forward, and you set, you bend the knees. This is uh, Sanchin Dachi. Sanchandachi stepping is very hard because you have to hook in and out and then set. And you always got to have your knees bent on this. But this corners and brings energy to the center of your heart, your tanda, so that you can get a power shot, power shot, as far as that goes. Uh, keep in mind that Sanchandachi is not a, what I call a mobile stance. Shikodachi can move very fast. Kivadachi, you can't. Nahachidachi, you can move very fast. Sanchandachi, you can't. So there's what we call fixed position and open position as well when it comes to the karate stances. When I come back, we're going to be talking about the kung fu stances as well.
Okay, before we get into the animal stances or what I call the Kung Fu stances, you gotta also remember we have one that's called Kakadach. Kakadach is a hook knee stance. Um, it can be done with both feet on the ground or with one foot in the air. However, we're just gonna cover the standard. When you get to running cows like Pinan, Yandan, there is a Kakadach stance in that. Uh, biggest mistakes I see a lot of people do is when they cross their legs, they're facing here but looking here. When you do this stance, you're actually forward. Okay? So if I was doing the kata, I'd be stepping here and crossing my foot behind. So that I can set for a powerful strike. Very important. That also sets me up. And like if I'm doing kusaku into this motion where I can step away very, very quickly. So kata actually is this. All right, let's look at the kung fu stances. The first one that we're gonna cover is what we call snake. Snake stance, the hands are constantly in motion and they're switching a lot. The starting out position is a cat stance like this. This would represent your tail, so it's going to kind of slither over. This hand's going to come up and set over. You can have two fingers, you can have four fingers, you can have the whole cobra head, however you want to do it. But this is your snake position as far as that goes. Quick, fast blocking and switching of the hands. You can trap and wrap and pull and strike. So there's lots of different things that we can do with that one. Tiger. Tiger's probably my favorite because ripping, grabbing, tearing, gouging, biting, clawing, striking, kicking. It covers pretty much the entire gamut of self-defense. When you do a tiger stance, you're going to assume you're kumi adachi. So the toes are pointed forward, and your hands are going to basically reach out away from you with the fingers curled in and the thumb extended and curled. The tiger is extremely powerful as far as ripping goes. So you'd be blocking here, clawing at the eyes, throwing and tear. So there's lots of things you can do with this tiger stance. Leopard stance is a little bit different. Instead of being in that kumite dachi, you actually have your front foot pointing forward. Front hand goes curl, back hand goes down, and this one comes up and down. And it starts right here from the groin above the head. The leopard does a lot of forward striking, kneeing, and kicking as far as that goes. But this is in position. You can also do inside strikes and ridge hands with that and knuckle strikes as well. Uh, that's Leopard and tiger are very close. Just remember the difference is the claw on the tiger, fingers close on the leopard. Dragon stance. Dragon stance is a low to the ground stance. It's very hard for older people to do, naturally, because our hips and our knees can't support our body weight like it used to. The dragon stance is like a namadachi, where you're here, but you're going to be leaning and you're going to sink your hip forward so you're setting down. So you're not like this, you're setting down forward easiest way to look at it. And when you do dragon stances, there's lots of different types of techniques that you can do. And remember, set the hip in, don't lean away. The crane stance, one of my favorite stances. Uh, everybody, when I first mention it, I see 20 different versions of the Karate Kid movie. Once again, referring to that Karate Kid movie, I don't think people realize the impact that a simple movie had on an entire generation of karate people. The crane stance that we do comes from the Hakusuru family of kata. Uh, we have in our system, Pasais have Hakusuru in them, uh, Roji Shiho has Hakusuru in them, Chinto has Hakusuru in them. The crane system is from Wushfuchao, China. It's very old. You will pre perform this in a cat stance. So you want to get down that good cat stance. The hands come up, set out, and then the elbows bent, so you're here. So you're open when you do this, like this. And then you can put the hands out, do other things as far as the blocking goes, quick attacks with the legs, striking in and out. There's lots of things, but this is a cat stance, and then pull down, okay? Spread the wings and pull down. The fingers can be very relaxed, or they can be tight. Doesn't really matter on that. I keep my fingers kind of in the middle, a little relaxed. This is a stance where you don't go and sit there. You're kind of just sitting floating and waiting as far as that goes. Notice the legs, the wings, everything's relaxed. So I can be very fast with the strikes. Uh, that's pretty much it on the stances. There are other stances. Some of them are more advanced and we'll get to those at a later date. But right now we're focusing on the Kihon Plaza stuff, the stuff that you can be practicing at home without really needing me to be there 100% to review because of the quarantine. Once this quarantine is up and lifted, or excuse me, the stay-at-home order is up and lifted, we'll be back in the dojo 
we'll be drilling, we'll be working. If you have any questions whatsoever, comment on the video, send me a message, or ask me when we get back in the dojo. See you at the next video coming up here in a little bit.